I've got a great idea. Let's go to Camelot. <laughs> Second thought, let's not go to Camelot. Tis a silly place. There, I did the thing. And yeah, you'd better believe that Dingo Pictures' Camelot is a very silly place indeed. Do you know who I am? You are someone really dragging his lines out. The live-action narrator here is Armin Drogat, Wabu's German voice actor, who also played Nosferatu once. So, yeah, I'm gonna break out Wabu's Feratu again. Kimilot, she's a very stupid place <laughs> for you. So, the Sword of Camelot, or just Camelot, is one of the couple of times Dingo decided to break things up with a live-action narrator with Georg Fales and the Bremen Town Musicians. However, it is a little different here as Armin Drogat is actually playing a character who's also in the animated portion of the movie. Former times, everyone knew me, Merlin. Shut up, Merlin. The greatest magician of the Middle Ages. Oh yes, Merlin. Merlin really needs to stop talking over himself as he can hear German Merlin under the English voice. They all came to me. They all wanted me to help them. Yeah, those must have been some pretty desperate times. As I mentioned in my Dingo Iceberg video, there are three variants of the East-West DVD of Camelot. One which cuts out the live-action narrator bits. And so... Which chops the movie in half, going from a 30-minute runtime to 15. There's the DVD variant that has the live-action segments intact, like the copy I got. And then there's a version where the sound is messed up and it's mostly just background noise and sound effects for the whole thing. Well, that's definitely in the version that'll be used in the Dingo Pictures Camelot Creepypasta. The greater matter was certainly King Arthur. King Arthur is my necklace, apparently. And, you know, this is the time we got the normal English dub with the live-action narrator, and sadly enough, it's kind of harder to listen to than the East-West dub on the Bremen Town Musicians one. Poo, he said. I smell poo. Yes. Started telling. And maybe if Merlin talked about poo a little more, he'd be a bit more exciting. It happened in England more than a thousand years ago. All right, for being over a thousand years old, I guess Merlin is doing pretty well. Though it's sad he's just gonna sit around the woods and pester people to listen to his stories. The old king had just deceased. <laughs> Deceased. You will get to know later what the Holy Grail is. Imagine it here in my hands if we had bothered with a prop. I am sure that Arthur became King of England. But I... I am not sure what my line is. And yeah, you were supposedly there, so you should be sure he became king, you stupid wizard. I love too that you can see the school or something that Merlin is filming in back of. Most of the dukes and knights agreed that Arthur should be the new king because they knew he was under my personal protection. So it wasn't that Arthur would make a good king or anything, it's just that a crazy old wizard wanted to install his little puppet as king. And they had a great respect for me. For 
you, you crazy old bastard. But there was only one man who did not agree with him. His name is... Let me look at the next page of the script here. Science has made progress. One day we'll all be able to fly. Whoops. Wrong dinosaur story. Mordred. Mordred? Like... Dr. Mordred? The Jeffrey Combs, we lost the license to Doctor Strange but made it anyway movie? Probably not that Mordred. Wish it was though. In the Arthur stories, Mordred is usually a traitorous villain, sometimes Arthur's nephew or a bit further away in the family tree. Guess Mordred is not related in any way to Arthur though in the Dingo Pictures famous telling of the King Arthur legend. Mordred is also usually a part of exposing the Guinevere and Lancelot affair. You'll also be surprised to hear that Dingo does not go into that one. <laughs> huh? The animation finally starts and Dingo wants to disorient you immediately as Arthur rides in from the left, we get a shot of stupid Merlin doing nothing still in the woods, and then suddenly Arthur is on the right! Come on, Merlin! Oh yes! Merlin! Arthur. You know, I think that you want to fight against one of the best and strong- You gotta love how Dingo doesn't have confidence to let Merlin deliver his boring line here, so it was imperative to interrupt it with a dinosaur laughing. Didn't know they still had laughing dinosaurs in the King Arthur days. We probably could have used some dino laughter during Merlin's boring live-action monologue. And show the castle of Camelot as the king's seat. This is boring. Well, I've decided to fight against him, and what a king decides upon, he shall keep. You know, I've become so used to these things at this point that it doesn't even faze me that they gave Arthur a female voice. I've become so numb! After saying a bunch of nothing, we see Merlin has taken the dinosaur with him, cause we need more random laughing cutaways. We are entering the territory of the Black Knight. <laughs> Why was that funny, Wabu? I don't know. Oh boy, a comedic looking doofus riding to the Peter Gunn theme. Don't make Dr. Mordred too scary, Dingo. Ah, a random scared dino cutaway. That's how we know it's scary. Ah, look, Arthur personally. What? Ah, look, Arthur personally. You know, sometimes these dingo characters say something that technically makes sense, but just sounds like gibberish first. However, how could Arthur not show up personally? His entire kingdom seems to consist of an old man and his pet dinosaur. King by Merlin's mercy. <laughs> Oh, to be in the Dingoverse, where absolutely anything said is hilarious. King by Merlin's mercy. Oh, so Arthur is already king? Thought we were gonna build up to that, but nah, we gotta focus on more important things, I guess. It's one of the best and strong. <laughs> Stop offending me! If laughing at nothing offends you, Arthur, you'd better get the hell out of Dingo Pictures! Perhaps you give me your sword immediately, then we can save a lot of time and I won't injure you, yeah! Oh, yeah! Big Mouth. As the legends go, Arthur was not only the King of England, but also the King of Insults. Oh, then we'll do it as you like. Arthur and Mordred pull those jousting lances out of their butts. And so Arthur and Mordred missed each other many times, which you think would be boring, but the excited dingo saw tells you otherwise. And so it went on for half a day. Wow, that level of time wasting is excessive even for dingo. By and by, the attacks became weaker and weaker, but neither of the two wanted to give up. Then the 
moment came when Arthur had to learn that also a king can be in trouble earlier. Oh, I just can't wait to be dead. Perhaps they can become friends. Hmm, I don't know. I think they should be enemies. Certainly finish him! Stop, Mordred. Merlin! Without you, Arthur can't do anything. Merlin, keep out of this. It's only something between Mordred and me. So, naturally, Merlin lets Arthur fight his own battles. Oh wait, never mind. Arthur is a little wiener boy who would have died immediately if he didn't have a wizard there to save his ass. Melon, what have you done? I am so offended. I have forgotten your name, mailman. Yeah, I deliver the ass kickings. Everybody will laugh at me. If a certain Merlin did not exist, then nobody could laugh at you because you would be stone dead. Now, making his way to the board, stone Dead King Arthur! There he lay for days between life and death. That must have been some blow Mordred struck off screen. At last, the herbs of the old man had their effect. So stupid Arthur laid around almost dead until he saw Guinevere and said, Arthur Horny! And Guinevere is, of course, their Anastasia model, modified into a princess that we also saw in the cat on boots. Merlin, please tell me who that young woman was. Her name is Guinevere. I'll marry her. I know things are stupid back then, but I love that it's just Arthur sees Guinevere for two seconds and says, yeah, I'll marry that. As soon as I have defeated Mordred, but this time without your help. Also without a sword, or sword was damaged in the fighting. Off screen, because it would have been too exciting to show how that happened. Oh, that's right. But where should I find a new sword in this wilderness? Aren't you the king, you stupid little wiener? Order a new sword to be made! Well, come along with me, and I'll find a new sword for you. For poo, more likey! <laughs> Sorry. Merlin then takes King Wiener to see the Lady of the Lake. You know, the one who usually gives Arthur Excalibur. Which is different from the Sword in the Stone. Which is also called Excalibur sometimes. So, I guess this is Excalibur 2, another disappointing sequel. You must be a fairy. You are right, Arthur. I'm Morgana from Avalon. Uh, the Lady of the Lake is usually named Nimu, not Morgana. Morgana? They came up with this name from the character Morgan Le Fay from the Arthurian legends, who was another magic user of some sort, either a witch or a fairy depending on the version, but she was not the Lady of the Lake. And Dingo Pictures had been so accurate up until this point. Damn. My sword is broken, and a king without a sword is a bit strange. Of course, Arthur was cousin it the whole time. I would like to ask you for a new sword. Do you see the sword in the lake? It's a name, Excalibur. Sure, yep, it's a name, Excalibur, all right. English is just dying a slow death here. Go and fetch it. Oh, oh. Uh. But the dingo saw got to the sword first, so it's the new king of England. Like a king. I had almost forgotten that he was a king himself. Seems like you did kind of forget earlier when you're just pretty sure he became king. He could not wait until he would challenge the Black Knight again. Oh, guess the sword doesn't make the man, Arthur. Well, Arthur and Mordred do have another off-screen battle, cause Dingo lazy, but the magic sword is indeed the only reason Arthur wins this time. And since a lot of the action is just explained by Merlin, it makes the version of this movie with the narration cut out pretty much nonsense as it just jumps to the end of a battle. Come on, Arthur, what are you waiting for? Mercy, King Arthur, spare my life. I will spare your life, only if you accept me as the rightful King of England. I promise. Of course I have to accept you now that you're using cheat codes. 
I invite you to my castle. Oh boy, a castle. Wish I had one of those. Now he knows I'm the stronger one. Do you really believe that? I'm the better and braver of us both. It's the sword. Whoever owns Excalibur is invincible. Reminder, Arthur, you are complete shit and would die in two seconds without that magic sword. Basically, we have to go against everything nature intends to keep you alive. It was totally against his idea of chivalry to fight against someone using a magic sword. Sure, I got the sword from a magic fairy woman in a lake, but I didn't think the sword was magic too. I just thought she had a regular foundry hidden under the water. The Black Knight suspected that it was not a normal sword with which he had been defeated. He wanted to have it at all. By all means, Guinevere. He sent me to ask her father for permission to marry her. That was the custom at the time. Only people who had a wizard to go ask a father's permission could get married back then. Guinevere didn't cause any problems. She was looking forward to becoming queen. Yeah, she and Lancelot stayed far away from each other. Nothing ever happened there. Nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. Nothing can happen. I only had to come to an agreement with her father about the dowry. I'd say Arthur should already be doing pretty well money-wise as king, but he's apparently a bum no one respects, so I guess he needs a wizard to demand protection money from his future father-in-law. My wedding present. That's quite nice, but round. We have never had a round table before. Get it? Get it? When the time is ripe, then they begin their search for the Holy Grail. Hey, you might as well search for a grail or something, cause I don't know what the damn hell we are doing here. Looking for the wonderful grail? I don't know anything about it. Except that it's wonderful, I guess. The Holy Grail will feed the hungry and heal the ill. Eh. Well said. Eh. Indeed. Knights of the Round Table. It doesn't sound bad. But Dinosaurs of the Round Table sounds even better. So they form their little knight squad, but Lancelot starts having issues with uh, whoever this guy is. I want to prove that I am a true knight of the round table. Uh, you dirty bit, you want to fight against me? I'll teach you a lesson. Come on, come on, big bully. Is Lancelot the bully here? You take an axe and hit me in the neck as hard as you can. Then I'll hit you back. <laughs> the prospect of them trying to cut each other's heads off is hilarious to all. <laughs> My neck is so thick from all the dingo laughing I do! Come on, hit me. Ha ha ha! Lancelot is about to be decapitated! I only wanted to test you, to see how brave you are, yeah! That's right, Lancelot was brave enough to let someone chop his head off. <laughs> Lancelot, I think you are brave enough. Lancelot is brave enough, brave enough for me. Arthur and his knights of the round table became more and more famous. All the bugs wanted their autographs. Because of his sword Excalibur, he remained it unwounded. This was a great blessing, because until then, every year I had the trouble of finding a new king. Every king got themselves killed in a year until you decide to cheat and keep stupid Arthur alive. Wow. Oh. Why are you staring at me like that? You are shining so much, are you an angel? Oh, nice. Now I guess we know where George Lucas got that wonderful line from. Are you an angel? What? I'm not an angel, definitely not. I'm a knight. And I want someone to be a knight. If you want to be a knight, you silly boy, then go to Camelot. King Arthur will not hesitate a second to knight you. You want to be a knight of the round table, and your qualifications are... You asked. Yep, you're in. So, this caveman is supposed to be Percival, who is one of the Knights of the Round Table. 
But now we know the true story of how he got in. He just asked because he thought Lancelot was an angel or something. Modric, go get me something to drink. It goes on like that the whole day. I'm not your servant. But I'm your queen and you have to do as I tell you. Well, guess I'm Team Mordred now. Without his sword, he would be the greatest coward of all time. You dare? Where is a knight who will take a revenge for this offense? Here, here! Oh good, Percival and his lettuce shield will defend the honor of Arthur, who's already died a thousand times. You? You are just good enough for a court jester. Be gone. And for once, we finally see a battle. <laughs> And now you see why Dingo was trying to avoid showing the battles. So after Merlin tells us that the stupid knight should actually get to that whole quest for the Holy Grail thing, they get sidetracked again! I want to show you something. What is that? Oh, of course. It's the sword and the stone. The thing Arthur should have pulled already to become the King of England. You know, it's just one of the most famous parts of the whole Arthur legend. Stop, Arthur. You may pull as much as you want, you will never do it. And why not? Because only somebody who has a good conscience can pull out the sword. Well, so much for that theory. I love the complete breaking of the Arthur tale here with Excalibur 1 not only still being in the stone, but Arthur also isn't good enough to pull the sword. But, I mean, he doesn't need two Excaliburs at once. Arthur's already spoiled enough with his little wizard cheat codes. Whoever is able to do that will find the Holy Grail. The sword in the stone will now lead you to the Holy Grail. <laughs> Holy shit, Merlin. Merlin! Do you want to try it? A good conscience. What do you mean by that? That one has never lied in one's life? If I think about it, I must say I don't need a new sword. There you have it. Arthur's a big old liar. You little liars. And you're the biggest liar of them all. Arthur also better be careful or he'll fall into the other dingo background with the river from Wabu and stuff. So it turns out that everyone is a big liar, but old Mordred at least tries to pull the sword. <laughs> <laughs> the lesson is, never try. Come here, Galahad. Yes, we spent all that time building up Percival because now it's all up to Galahad, who has just suddenly popped into existence. Galahad? Who the hell's Galahad? Galahad, by the way, is supposed to be Lancelot's son, which of course is not going to be mentioned here. Also, Galahad's birth was only made possible by Lancelot being magically deceived as Galahad's mother Elaine was made to look like Guinevere by a magic ring attained by her father so that Lancelot would accidentally sleep with her and give birth to Galahad. Wow. That's messed up enough to sound like it came out of Greek mythology. Anyway, Galahad, who's not had a single line in the movie yet, is of course going to be the one to pull the sword. <laughs> Time's up, Arthur. So, this part with Galahad pulling a sword from the stone is also actually being taken from the Arthurian tales as, get this, there was a second sword in the stone. Two Excaliburs, two swords and stones, why not? And of course, Dingo would adapt the second sword in the stone that no one really cares about. This sword in the stone story was mostly just Arthur saying, Hey, Galahad, you need a sword, so go pull that backup sword in the stone. You have to go now and find the Holy Grail. But you have told us, only Galahad could find a wonderful bowl. Yeah, from now on, I think the Holy Grail should just be known as the Wonderful Bowl. When all the knights of Camelot have disappeared, I will succeed in getting the sword Excalibur in my position. Everybody had a lot of adventures. Galahad as well. He killed two dragons, five giants. Sounds pretty exciting, right? Well, that's why we skipped it. We hate you.
wherever he turned up, he was admired by everyone. If Galahad was going to be so important, maybe you should have made him an actual character in your movie, Dingo. Galahad, we've almost come to the end of our search. 25 minutes in and Mr. Important finally got a line. You two will find the grail together with me. And then maybe I can finally call you daddy, Lancelot. Hell no, I never wanted you. Big daddy? They are all kind of lost at this point on the grail quest, so the Morgana of the Lake shows up and gives them a magic boat so that they'll actually find the damn wonderful bowl. Well, Gala had it always believed in miracles. They came to a cave. Percival and Lancelot were the bravest knights of their time. They now hesitated to follow Galahad. Just like Dingo hesitated when it came to animating half of this movie. Lancelot! Big Daddy! Percival, don't be afraid. My task is done. Wow. Thrilling. So, yep, that's the whole Grail quest. It's over. And most of it was just live action Merlin telling you things happened. Galahad has found the wonderful bowl. Arthur, the Knights of the Round Table are coming back. I can't believe that. To hell with him. Oh, uh, yeah, Mordred. I guess we have to wrap that up in like the last minute of the movie. Yeah, I want to know everything. Where are Percival and Galahad? <laughs> While the knights were talking and talking. That's right, we can't even be bothered to animate a full conversation anymore in this movie. I had taken the sword Excalibur with me. My dreams wanted it to be that way. So basically, Arthur's outlived his usefulness to you. Rip and piss, Arthur! Even a magician can fall in love. And I had fallen in love with Morgana. Oh yeah, sure, sure. Giving Merlin a love interest seems totally necessary. So are we gonna finish that Mordred plot or not? I withdrew from the life on this earth. I wanted to be together with her and live in a different world. Some call it hell. Kidding me! They really didn't bother to have a final confrontation between Mordred and Arthur? Well, since Merlin took Excalibur, I guess we know how that eventually went. Since I was dead now, someone else could find the next king. Fuck him. And wait a second, if Merlin died in the story, does that mean his stupid ghost has nothing better to do than haunt the woods behind a building telling people incomplete stories? Rest in poo, Merlin. Poo, he said. I smell poo. Yes. I did it. I pulled the sword from the stone. I am the new king of England. Nah, that just means you're going to find the wonderful bowl. Here you go, Wabu. Oh, wow. Ninja Turtles, real surprising. So, uh, what now? Well, we have been hinting that your knights, Garfield, Meowth, and Michelangelo are going to betray you. But we've run out of time. The end. pass on that wusho, but I will allow you to have your head chopped off by me. Uh, I don't know about this, Wabu. Shut up, wusho. <laughs>